hey babe, I wanna max out all my credit cards so we can flip houses. And I said, what? And I'm like, babe, so what's your social? <laughs> <laughs> like, that was a whole nother thing, a whole nother situation. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the... Wait, we're not in the Ryan Pineda show. We're in the Ryan and Mindy show. <laughs> so we are doing a brand new segment that is very different than the rest of my channel, and I'm super excited about it. So this is a new series we're doing, and it's gonna be very focused on relationships, especially between husbands and wives, mm -hmm. family. We're gonna talk a lot about the things that go on behind the scenes of you know building businesses, building a YouTube channel, all the stuff I've had to put her through along the way, so. It's a lot, guys. Yeah, you guys will get to hear it firsthand in this series. And in this very first episode, we're gonna be talking about how to get your spouse on board with crazy ideas, business ideas, <laughs> investments, things that maybe they're not so excited about. <laughs> so this is gonna be a little bit different than what he normally has on his channel. Um, it's going to be a little bit more free flow, off the cuff. We've got a baby here who's not <laughs> sleeping. We've got a dog right here. No, stop. Baxter! <laughs> it's hard to film at home. This is why I have an office, because I could <laughs> never get anything done here. But our hope is that by sharing our experiences as a couple through all of these years of entrepreneurship and business and baseball and everything in between that it encourages you guys. It shows you that not everything is easy. Not everything is just all roses and gold and rainbows and <laughs> isn't that what people... It's kind of just going to be us talking and just really getting deep on what it's been like in our journey. My hope is that a lot of women are going to enjoy this because most of my audience is male and <laughs> I think my wife can change that. <laughs> Hopefully. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Definitely let us know by hitting that like button and commenting below the parts that you do like during this segment. Let's jump into it. Yay. So as we said before, we're gonna talk about how do you get your spouse on board? So the reason that I wanted to do this first episode is because I get this in the DMs almost more than anything. And it's kind of a taboo topic because a lot of entrepreneurs wanna be superheroes, like things don't go wrong, like we got this. In reality, it's not like that. It's easy to hide things that go wrong when you have a magic editor like my wife. <laughs> she, she can edit all these mess ups I have. But in the big picture of it, how do you, actually get your wife on board? How do you get your husband on board? And by the way, guys, make sure you go follow her on Instagram at MinsuPin. And you can DM me with any questions that you have or just share your story with me. I would love to hear it. She's gonna be a lot more responsive than me because I get <laughs> hundreds of DMs a day. I don't have a lot of that many followers, so I'll definitely reply. Yeah, for sure, shoot her a DM. All right, so let's get in the episode. I can actually think of four major events where they were really big decisions. They were kind of crazy ideas that really Really, we didn't know how they were gonna play out. They mm -hmm. were just faith-based like, hey, I hope this works, you know, God will provide. And thankfully they did work out, but what I think a lot of people would like to hear is like your perspective of what it was like when we were going through it, when I told you about it. So the four big decisions we've had in our marriage, which is coming up on seven years next month. It's a long time. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so the four major things that we did were, number one, I chose to continue playing baseball even though I was getting paid nothing. I knew it wasn't gonna be a big career going forward. I knew it wasn't gonna pay the bills, but it was something I just wanted to continue to do. The second thing was couch flipping. I've had a viral video on YouTube and TikTok about couch flipping, but let me tell you, when I had that first idea and I brought it to her, it was not something that was well received. That was a whole nother thing, a whole nother situation. <laughs> that was the second big one. The third big one was even crazier than couch flipping. That was going to her and saying, hey babe, I wanna max out all my credit cards so we can flip houses. And I said, what? That was a big decision. And then the fourth was recently. It was YouTube. You know, during the pandemic, I said, you know what? I wanna start a YouTube channel. I'm going all in, buying all this studio equipment. I'm gonna be filming our lives, cause it's not just me. Like, yeah, I can make videos and she's not gonna care. But now look, <laughs> we're doing a show together. <laughs> now he's roped me into this. <laughs> <laughs> right. And even like, we've had, I'm having YouTube success with my channel. And I'm like, well, let's, let's do our own thing. Trust me, a lot of you guys watching right now might be like, 
well, yeah, obviously she should have accepted it because they've all worked out. It wasn't like that in the beginning. Yeah, it wasn't like that in the beginning. None of these had any proof of concept. It was just really faith-based. So let's start off with baseball because by the time we got married was 2013. Mm -hmm. So I'd played four seasons professionally and I ended up playing eight total. So I played another four years. When I was doing it back when we first got married, you didn't have a job. Mm -hmm. You were in college. Mm -hmm. I sucked as a realtor. <laughs> I wasn't making no money. Yeah, um, I was living at home. You were living at home. I just remember, I'm like, what do I do with my life? And it just kind of seemed like I had an opportunity to play baseball, mm -hmm. even though we knew that this wasn't really going to be the future. It wasn't long term, but it was for now. I mean, what was your thoughts like back then on, you're in college, you knew what you wanted to do. You right. were going to be a teacher. Right. But for me, baseball was all I ever knew. And real estate was, I was really bad at. When Ryan first got released, you know, we had a conversation I remember vividly in my room. He was sitting on my couch, just not knowing what to do, um, not knowing if he should go play independent ball because that was kind of something that some players really didn't want to do. And I just really felt that, yeah, this baseball thing, you know, isn't going to go on forever, but you're not done yet. You're so talented. And yeah, so I just really told him like, let's just do it and you know, it's, we're young, it's an adventure. And teaching is the perfect opportunity because I can teach during the year. And then in the summer when season starts, I can go with you. And that, that honestly was how it played out because if it was up to me, I would have retired back then because in my mind, logically it didn't make sense to play. Mm -hmm. Because I'm like, well, this isn't the future. Why am I not building towards the future? Why am I not doing something that's gonna push us forward? And it was her who was like, no, you should play. Just play for fun. Like, who cares, right? I mean, that, if it goes somewhere, cool. If somebody, you know, and if not, it's fun. <laughs> like, <laughs> And we were both poor. We didn't have any money. In <laughs> yeah, it like, wasn't, well, the money wasn't the factor. It was the adventure. <laughs> it was, you know, going and living in these new places and meeting all these new people. And yep. it was honestly a dream just to watch him play baseball every night. And looking back on it now, yeah, it was like, I'm so happy I played as long as I possibly could. Mm -hmm. I would have had a lot of regret not getting those extra four years I got. I wouldn't have did it if she didn't push me to do it. So that's one example. I bet a lot of you guys are probably thinking that it was me trying to persuade her, like, come on, let me play. Like, <laughs> I think actually I was yeah, I was like, so. dude, I'm so burnt out of baseball. Yeah. Like, I don't want to like, do this. No, please, come on, <laughs> keep going. So in that first example of making a big career choice decision, you actually encouraged me mm -hmm. to do something that, you know, wasn't going to make a lot of money, but in the end was the right choice because we enjoyed the next four years, you know, married, traveling together. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. The second choice that we talked about was couch flipping. <laughs> okay, guys, I was not on board with this one at first, okay? So this one was definitely me <laughs> convincing her that this was a good idea. 1,000%. So if you haven't seen the couch flipping video, definitely find it in the description below. Uh, maybe the card will pop up around here somewhere. We got married, we moved into our first apartment together. I bought all the furniture used, cause like we said, we were poor. Mm -hmm. And I just remember buying it all and I'm like, I could flip all this furniture right now and make a couple thousand bucks. And a couple thousand bucks was a lot of money because we didn't even have a couple thousand bucks. Yeah, it was a <laughs> lot of money. I was actually substitute teaching at the time, which I never really talk about at all because it's kind of embarrassing. And <laughs> <laughs> people were roasting me in the comments on the couch swimming video because I admitted like I was substitute teaching and I was just not doing it. I was just taking role and then I was checked out. I was thinking of ways that I could get a new job because substitute teaching sucked. And it finally just clicked one day while I was doing it that, hey, if I just flip one couch or one appliance or one anything, mm -hmm. I can make way more money than sitting here for six hours doing something I hate, being a bad teacher. Making terrible money. <laughs> and she was a teacher for three years. Three years, yeah. And so she knows I was not good for the kids back then. <laughs> Long story short, I ended up testing the theory. I said, I'm just gonna buy one thing, babe. Like, let me just buy one thing. Mm -hmm. And she was like, okay. I bought a couch, sold it, made some money. And that was fine because it wasn't a really big risk, you know, was buy a couch for a couple yeah. hundred bucks. And if we can flip it for more, great. Otherwise we can probably sell it for the same price right. that you bought it for. The issue came once he started bringing several couches. <laughs> and mind you, if you've seen that couch video, you'd know that he had a storage unit. 
And so he would put all the couches there. But before that, he used our garage. And I was skeptical because random people were coming to our house, you know. And so that was my first concern. So then he started bringing the couch cushion covers inside my house and using my detergent, my lot, <laughs> my washer and dryer to clean all of them. He had them spread out over the entire house, rubbing them. And that's when I really was like, I don't know if we can do this. I don't know if I can do this anymore. Well, and the thing was, I realized from the beginning that, hey, I don't want people coming to our house either. Right. And so that was like the first thing I did was get a storage unit once I proved the concept of the house. I think I got a storage unit within like three couches. Once I sold three of them and made 500 bucks, I was like, all right, this is a legit business. Yeah, I mean, he saw the potential from early on and so did I too. So that's why I said, okay, well, if you're gonna do it, do it. but. Not at my house. <laughs> yeah. So the only thing from there was just dealing with the cushion covers every night because mm -hmm. I would buy a couch or two every day. And these are sectionals. These aren't just like little couches that we're sitting on. These are cushion covers with 10, 15 covers that he's bringing in at a time. And that's only one couch. Well, and the other thing was because I was out delivering or picking up couches. So while they're getting washed, who's washing them? I was like, me. yeah, you have to, I need you to go put that on and He'll put them in the dryer. Me, hey, you know, the washer's gonna finish in 15, put it in the dryer. <laughs> then after that, take them out. And I'm like, yeah. what job is this? Yeah, I mean, like you said, it wasn't like a huge risk. It was more of like an inconvenience. Even though it was an inconvenience for me, he, and he found a way to get it done without it bothering me so much. I think in the end you got over the washer because it was making really good money. Yeah. You were like, you know what? <laughs> I can live with this because I'm living a pretty good life now versus, you know, you making no money. Pretty much. Um, so guys, number one lesson is if it actually works, they can kind of look past it once you prove it works. Which brings us to our third thing, which is the riskiest of them all. You know, we are making good money flipping couches. I did really? not need to take a big risk, but even then, as a guy who's always trying to improve, I wasn't happy because I I felt like I'd reached the top of the couch flipping game. Like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm the best. There's no one that can beat me in this game, but I've reached the top. What else is there to buy or do? Like right. I had reached a peak. I started to learn about real estate investing. And even though I had been terrible as a realtor before that, I just felt the calling to do it. And even though I, we didn't have money, we had saved up $10,000. That was strictly all from couch flipping. Mm -hmm. We didn't have debt, we didn't have anything, which was great. And I just remember listening to Bigger Pockets and reading one of my friend Brandon, well, one of my friend now, Brandon Turner's books. It wasn't my friend then. He was too like way too big for me. We listen. I can't tell you how many Bigger Pockets podcasts we listen to in the car. Well, I would listen to two to three a day while I was flipping couches because I'm on the road all day picking up, delivering. And so by the time I finally decided to pull the trigger and like we we're gonna do this, mm -hmm. I had been researching and listening for probably I don't know four months. And then I finally pulled the trigger because I felt like, hey, I know exactly what's going to happen now, how this all plays out. And I think that that is an important part because I watched him do all of this research, right? I mean, I even felt, I listened to so many podcasts that I felt like I could do it. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I watched him put in the work before we even got to this big risk that, you know, we're about to talk about. But right. And I didn't even, I, until we've talked about it now, I never even thought about that part of it. I think a lot of people think I was just like, one day I was like, we're flipping and it just happened the next day, which it didn't. I got the bug, I read books, I listened to podcasts for months, and then finally I found a good deal mm -hmm. and I'm like, all right, this is how we're gonna do it. This is yeah. the only way. Like I have to max our credit cards. This is the one I've been like training for. I have no problem taking risks because I'm a gambler. I'm from <laughs> Vegas. <laughs> I, I play poker, I do all that stuff. And I just remember I had my credit cards and I had to open up credit cards in her name too mm -hmm. because I couldn't get enough credit. And I'm like, babe, so what's your social? <laughs> like, we're gonna have to open up these credit cards for all of us because I'm gonna need every last dollar to do this. Well, and, and to be honest, he was kind of doing it on his own. So I was just like, yeah, here, here's my social, here's my birthday, here's all this stuff, you know? I, kinda, I, knew, her, I, knew, I knew her birthday. Yeah. <laughs> I, knew, I knew what he was doing, but I don't think I really grasped the scope of how much money you were taking out. No, you didn't for sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like, I don't know. I uh, You have to be a good salesperson. I had sold her on the idea that, hey, this is going to work. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Like mm -hmm. failing wasn't even a consideration. Like I didn't even have the slightest doubt that it was gonna fail because I had so much faith that it was gonna work. And like, I think that's the big yeah. thing too is that he, I saw how much confidence he had and it just, 
made me feel confident about it. I, I had no doubt, I had no fear, and I think that, you know, that's something, you know, probably a lot of you wives go through is that when your husband comes with this crazy idea of, hey, we're gonna max all our credit cards, <laughs> and if it doesn't work, we're probably gonna have to sleep in a box. And your first instinct is to be, oh my gosh, what's gonna go wrong? You know, how can I control this situation? You know, and all of these things that go through your head, but he exuded so much confidence, and I just had so much faith in him. I had so much faith in God that this would work out, and you know, I just said, all right, do it. You know, I, I never feared that it would fail, but you know, obviously you think about it, I'm, I'm human. But I said, you know, if it doesn't work, we're gonna be together and we're gonna do it, we're gonna figure it out together. And you know, if we live in a box, then we live in a box and we'll work our way back up. It's really not that big of a deal. And I think one thing I did wanna mention is that we always think about stuff and worry about stuff that hasn't even happened yet. <laughs> and we hadn't failed, we hadn't been living in a box, right. you know, all of these things hadn't happened yet. So why do I need to dwell on it and worry about it and have so much fear about it. So let's do it, let's go for it. And if we get to that point, then we'll figure it out together. Uh, first off, I love that. And I think that's what fear is, is like people fear the unknown and things that haven't happened. Like you don't right. fear something that's already happened. Right. Like you're dealing with the problem <laughs> if it already happened. Right. Fear comes from thinking about things that have not yet happened. Yeah, I we never had a discussion of like, hey, Okay, what are the pros and cons of this? Like what, here's the pro, this works out great. Here's the cons. We, we never had that. No, not at all. And it's not to say that we shouldn't have had that conversation. Right, um, we probably should have. <laughs> if, we, if we were gonna max out all of your credit cards and put literally every single dollar that you've worked for into something that you have no idea how it's gonna turn out, yeah, it's good to have those conversations. It just comes down to confidence. And I think mm -hmm. she saw, like she said, the work I was putting in, she saw my confidence in the deal. You know, it wasn't like I said, the next day I'm, I'm ready to buy a deal. It was months of learning and watching and still flipping couches, working hard. To be honest, in my mind, I always had the backup plan that, hey, if this doesn't work, I can always flip couches mm -hmm. and still make good money. And that's good because I literally had no idea what our backup plan would be. <laughs> well, I didn't you, even think about couches actually. I, I knew I could always do that. You were in college still becoming a teacher mm -hmm. and I was like, you know, if I'm flipping couches and you're a teacher, you get insurance and retirement and all that stuff, mm -hmm. we'll we'll like live a really fine. good life. Yeah, it'll be good. I'll I'll make my hundred thousand a year. She'll make nothing being a teacher, but get benefits and we'll be fine. <laughs> that, that was what gave me confidence in taking a risk for sure. That was the third biggest thing. And that's what I guess I'm known for the most. But the fourth one is what we're talking about and doing right this second. Mm -hmm. And that's YouTube. You want to tell them how much I hate it on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I really love watching YouTube. I like watching makeup videos and house tours and like all of these things. And so years and years ago, I would sit on my phone and watch YouTube and he would hate on me all day, like nonstop. Why are you watching that? You're wasting so much time. YouTube sucks, blah, 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 like all this stuff. A lot of things I've hated on have ended up being really good. And that's and something that we can go into if you guys want. I can give you, you a want, whole list. If you, want to get, if you guys want to hear about that, comment below and uh, we'll do another video on that. Long story short, I hate on a lot of things that I end up being wrong about. <laughs> and um, YouTube was probably the biggest one because she'd watch it all the time. I'm like, why are you watch? In my mind, I'd never watched YouTube like other than to figure out how to do something. I seriously couldn't understand it. <laughs> and during the pandemic, I had many people tell me on Instagram that, hey, you should get on YouTube. And I just started looking into it and watching other people's videos. And I've gone into the story before on my other ones, but I had so much time being stuck at home mm -hmm. with nothing to do. And I was just sitting there thinking about where the world was going and what's the next play. And it just became apparent that YouTube was the way. And I remember, and I should remember, it wasn't that long <laughs> it wasn't, ago. Yeah, it, wasn't. it wasn't that long ago. I was working out every day here at the house. And I watched YouTube every day for an hour while I was working out. And I watched a bunch of videos about how much money these guys were making, how much YouTube had impacted their business. And I just was convinced. Just like I was convinced that couch flipping was gonna work. And just like I was convinced that real estate investing and house flipping was gonna work. I just had that instant conviction that YouTube was gonna work. And starting out, I was like, hey, this is gonna be tough. This is gonna be really hard. Mm -hmm. But as I learned it, as I researched it, just like I researched house flipping, I learned about the algorithm. I learned about how to edit and make videos. I learned about the right equipment. I learned about how to hook people in. Mm -hmm. Once I learned it, 
I was like, it's actually not that hard. I still had no data or proof that what I thought was true, but I was like, I'm going all in, babe. I'm becoming a YouTuber. I think within <laughs> one night, he bought all of this equipment, or you guys can't see the equipment, but he bought the camera, the lights, everything in one night. He was so sure and passionate and ready and knew that it would work that he went all in. I, and I think that's a big key is that once again, I did the research. I had confidence that it was gonna work. Mm -hmm. She saw the confidence. She saw me putting in the research. As somebody who hated on YouTube all this time to be watching YouTube nonstop <laughs> and then to be like, yeah, I'm gonna do this. To go from a guy who hates YouTube to like being a YouTuber wanting to do it. Mm -hmm. It's pretty yeah. comical actually. <laughs> I always yeah. actually get on him too because when I was first watching YouTube, you know, I kind of thought maybe we should do like film some of your flips or maybe we should do this. And this was before the flipping shows and all of that stuff. And I beat myself up for not pushing him to do it. But whatever. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. We'll still make it big anyway, as long as you guys like and subscribe if you haven't already. So obviously at this point in our marriage and our lives, there's not like a lot of convincing I have to do that something's gonna work. Now we have a track record of success. Like, mm -hmm. hey, every time I've said this, it's always been something that ended up working out. Mm -hmm. The hard part is that now it actually involves her on camera, mm -hmm. in the public eye. It involves our kids, our home. People are gonna be, you know, wanting to know more about us. Yeah, and they already <laughs> do. And I feel like the following is is starting. Um, and you know, I can't lie and say that I wasn't a little bit worried because at first it was, okay, yeah, you do YouTube, you be on camera, you do all of this stuff. I don't like being on camera. I don't like, you know, exposing my personal life. If it helps one person, then that's okay to share something a little bit more private. And that's my, that's the hard thing for me is I don't really have a filter guys. <laughs> um, you guys have seen, I'm very transparent with talking about money, talking about family, talking about my faith, talking about how much I sucked in something I did or losing money or baseball, whatever. I'll just tell it like it is. That's definitely one thing that I have to be mindful of is even though I don't care, I gotta be mindful of her. I gotta be mindful of my kids. But you know what I'll say, and we talk about this is it's great now because we weren't doing any type of family videos or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so now when we do these vlogs, we're gonna have those forever and make money off of them. <laughs> to me, that's the best thing ever is like, you, we're gonna get these family videos that James and Olivia are gonna get to watch, mm -hmm. you know, years down the road. And that's the part that <laughs> I love. And I think that's why I'm, you know, really just on board at this point, because I love watching them back and seeing how small they were and, and growing. I mean, we caught Olivia's birth on camera. <laughs> I did film Olivia's birth. <laughs> and I, I, you know, and I go back and watch that all the time. And it's just amazing to have that. And then the bonus for you is we make money. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just like I I have this running joke because I'm, I'm pretty much filming every vacation because yeah. why not? And it's like this video might actually just pay for the vacation. Where else is that possible in any job or world? Well, I guess people they have paid vacation, but this is literally <laughs> a paid vacation, you know, just for bringing a camera around. Mm -hmm. And that, there were so many reasons that I just was so gung ho about YouTube, you know, not it's not just about the money and the monetization and all that. I enjoy it. I enjoy influencing people. I enjoy helping people. Mm -hmm. And to me, it became apparent that YouTube was the best way to do that. Because even though I only focused on Instagram for years and somewhat Facebook, just the span of the four or five months I've been on YouTube is way bigger than mm -hmm. even that. And I've put way more time into Instagram over the years versus YouTube now. To me, there's just nothing better to spend my time towards. And I, I mean, I hope you guys can see even just when he talks about it, he is so confident and passionate about it. And I think, you know, going back to getting your spouse on board, if they're not that passionate about it or they're lukewarm or they're kind of just like, well, we can do this, it might work, it might not. Well then, yeah, you know, that's a bigger conversation that you need to have. But if they are just 100% ready and all in and they've done the research that, you know, like Ryan has done and all of these adventures that we've gone through, um, um, you got to just let them do it and be supportive and be there. And like I said, don't worry about something that hasn't even happened yet. Just enjoy the ride. You know, I tell you all yeah. the time, I'm just here for the ride. Like I'm just, <laughs> I just enjoy, you know, all of the adventures that you do. And I'm just thankful to be a part of it. 
I love it. So what I take from it, guys, is that as long as you're confident about what you're doing, you're mm-hmm. showing that, hey, here's why I have confidence. It's not just freaking yeah. dumb luck. Com- <laughs> like, I'm just so good. I'm going to do it. Like, no, like yeah. you're proving why you're confident with the research and the work you're putting in. Mm-hmm. If you have those things, then what you're saying is then your wife should really or your husband or wife, whoever's the one doing it, right. should be tossing in that support. Yeah. When does it not make sense? I guess I would say if your spouse has proven that everything that they've done has failed or they (laughs) don't have a good track record, you know, then that's something that you guys have to have a conversation with of how far are we willing to go. And I, I agree with you because I do get DMs from people who are like, I've been trying to do this for five years, Mm -hmm. 15, like I've had people say 15 years. I'm like, Dude, if you haven't figured it out in 15 years, I would not trust you either. Yeah, like, it's probably you probably need to yeah. do something else or you haven't changed at all what you've done. That's why yeah. it hasn't worked. Well, and they'll they'll tell me they're like, "Ryan, I want to get in your coaching program." You know, I've already spent twenty, thirty thousand dollars on other coaching, and it's been ten years, and I haven't been able to get a deal. I'm like, dude, honestly, you should. <laughs> my my, my no, you're you're gonna get the same result because it's not at that point. It's you. It's right, not right. the coaching program. And I see why your wife or your husband does not trust you. Mm-hmm. So I think it's gonna depend on you and your track record. And obviously, when you're starting something new, okay, you have no track record at it, this new venture, but you have a track record on all the other things in your life. Right, and you obviously married them for a reason, or you're with them for a reason. You know, it's you're not with them to just tear down every idea that they have. You know, you're with them to encourage them and support them and, and let them know that, hey, if this doesn't work out, I'll still be here. If it works out, it's awesome. You know, so I think that it's important that you support them regardless. Um, but like you said, don't be you know, stupid about it. Or, you know. <laughs> yeah. And I guess the last thing is for us taking those big risks, it was just you and me. But you know, if you got three kids and you're older and I think it depends where you're at in your life, track record, all those things as well. But if you're putting in the work, you got the confidence and at least give it a shot. Maybe there's a way to not go all in, take a stab at it. Maybe it's a side hustle where you're still keeping your job, doing your thing, and then you are doing this on the side. And if you can't get it done on the side, then so will be it. Yeah. How do you think that went? I think it went really good. (laughs) What'd you guys think? Comment below if you guys liked it. I hope it's helped you guys in some way. And I think you guys should comment below what else you guys want to see from us. Yeah, for sure. Whatever you guys want us to talk about, Mm -hmm. happy to talk about it as a couple. Make sure you guys keep watching. Follow her. I'm sure you guys already follow me. And if you don't, then... What are you doing? Yeah, I don't know. (laughs) I don't know what you're doing. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Take care. Thanks, guys. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Ryan and Mindy Show. It's me, I'm Mindy.